Hi, my name is Jacob Rockwitz, and this screencast is going to walk through configuring form settings, styles, and behaviors. I'm going to start with the contact form. I'm going to show it to you. It's a very simple form. We can go over to edit, and it does start off with editing elements, but you can go over to the settings tab, and this allows you to control all the behaviors around your form. It starts off with just titles and administrative description. You can enable this form as a template. You can disable the saving of submissions. You can also control the URL and you can give dedicated URLs to your forms or you can embed them in nodes and there'll be screencasts about that. Control the status. Every message is customizable and there are defaults to every message. So in the admin settings, which is another screencast, you can set the default messages and values for every message on here, exception message, or you can customize it. You also get the ability to stylize every button available on the forms and there's five or six buttons. It's the submit button, draft button, preview buttons, and then these are a bunch of options to control the behavior, which is you can allow the form element to be pre-populated using query string. You can pre-populate source entities. You can even disable the back button, warn users of unsaved changes, disable, it's, it's a lot, disable client-side validation. And I like this feature where if you have a really simple form, you can auto-focus the first element. Very useful if you want to speed up the, the user experience process if they're entering a lot of data. You can also add custom classes and styles to your form, even custom attributes. The web form module does support multi-step forms. So you can control those settings, how the progress bar is displayed, the labeling. You can enable previews of your form submissions. You can enable drafts so it'll automatically save it, and then you'll see all the options come available. You also get the ability to do submission limits for your form, per user, per entity. If they're submitting it from a node, that's another way to kind of set up some submission limits. You also get full configuration of the confirmation page. Um, actually, I'll show you all those settings. You can control the style and look and feel of the confirmation page and whether there's a back button displayed. And now we're getting toward the end where every form has an owner which helps control access. And by default, all the forms that are installed by the web form module don't have an owner assigned, but you can go put yourself as an owner. If you create a form, it will track you. Then you can also inject custom properties into your form. And you can change the behavior of how your form submit. This is a very interesting feature. So right now this form is posting back to the server. But you can go in and change the action of the form and have it post to a completely different server, a different callback. And it opens up a lot of options where you can use Drupal to build your forms, but have them submit to a completely different server or location. Um, it's just an interesting possibility. Another aspect of settings is you can also inject custom CSS and JavaScript into your specific form. Um, I actually like demoing this feature because you can go in and say, form. And this is just a very simple example, but I want to make a giant form. Font size 2M. I'm going to hit save. And now we're going to go in and view the form. And we've got a gigantic form. Of course, if you know the classes and you target the classes, you can do a lot more advanced stuff. And you can also add custom JavaScript behavior, including custom conditional logic using that injection feature. Um, that's about it for all the form settings and behaviors that you control for a form. I hope you enjoy tweaking your forms as much as you'd like. Take care.